So, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Avishag Danieli. You can call me Abby. I think that might be a little bit easier. Uh, I'm a director of product management at Gardecore, and I'm going to be talking to you about uh, behind the scenes. First of all, the fundamentals that what led us to build the solution that we have actually built, and then a little bit what happens behind the scenes. And the second part that we're going to see later is more about your part as a user, <coughs> how you would be using Gardecore and what it would look like to actually use Gardecore for a segmentation and micro-segmentation project. So before I start, good morning. I know it's pretty early. Hope you all had coffee. For anybody at home, good evening. So why are we here, right? Where does it all start? So in today's hybrid cloud infrastructure, or hybrid data center, as Dave mentioned before, you basically have legacy systems on premise holding you back, still have those old systems over there. And at the same time, you're moving to the cloud thinking of moving to the cloud, starting to do this transition, and also starting to adapt containers. You have virtual machines. You have this hybrid data center. And you're thinking that you might be doing this transition, and it'll be a rapid change. But most of our customers see that those legacy systems will be there for a while. So when looking at traditional security approaches to data centers today, such as firewalls, access control lists, VLANs, even cloud security groups, they are ineffective. They're inefficient. The reason for this is, first and foremost, they hold you back. They're tied to the specific infrastructure that they're built to secure. And moreover, they also don't provide you any visibility. So if you're audited and you need to be compliant, you'll actually have to add another different set of solutions. And if you are hybrid, you would have to have a set of different solutions that I just mentioned to protect your different areas in the data center. And most of the job around them, most of working with them is manual. Even if you have automated processes, Nothing works at the pace of business that you're expecting it to work in your DevSecOps world of today. So when talking about traditional security approach, approaches, it's ineffective also to, to the effect of the granularity that you're looking for. You're looking for solutions that will give you, poli that will give you policies down to process level, user identity, fully qualified domain names, when the existing solutions, they don't reach that level. So if we focus on VLANs, for example, right? So VLANs, they actually fail, and you probably all know this. They fail to deliver visibility. They give you no visibility, which actually means that, again, you will have to use a different solution if you want to pass an audit. And they don't deliver fast deployment, right? You might have some automated process around your VLANs, but it's still a manual process somewhere. It will require downtime. It'll take you days to configure, change IPs, et cetera, et cetera. It takes a while. And we've actually seen that even if you think it'll take you days, sometimes it takes you weeks and even months to achieve segmentation using VLANs. Again, they also don't support cloud and not even containers. So they're only relevant for your on-premise. And even there, they don't deliver the flexibility that you need. Now, if you move forward to security groups, for example, in the cloud, right? So security groups in the cloud, they're actually becoming <coughs> the new VLANs to the extent of they have the same ailments. Again, they don't provide the relevant granularity, right? So everybody thinks when you look at security groups, you say, they're this new next generation firewall. They're going to provide me with what I need to be able to segment my applications. But they actually don't go down to the level that you need. Again, they're usually built in for layer four security, ports, IPs. But that's not enough. You need to have protection down to process level, down to, again, fully qualified domain names, user identities, et cetera. And these just don't deliver. So what do we do in this world with these existing solutions? What we actually do is we've decided on the following fundamentals for our solution to be able to deliver you the simplest solution out there to be able to segment and micro-segment your data center. So the first thing that we've done is we've decided that we're going to cover the whole data center, those legacy systems that are still holding you back, and at the same time, virtual machines, uh, cloud uh, instances, um, cloud assets, as well as containers. So a single pane of glass to cover your whole data center from a centralized management. And we do this by, at the same time, providing enforcement across, again, the whole infrastructure. And we are doing this while we are completely decoupled from the underlying operating system. So this means that we are not tied down by what IP tables, for example, can let you do, which is ports and uh, IPs. We are actually, in, actually enabled, we are actually able to perform uh, process level control, fully qualified domain names, user identities, and give you the context and the information that you need to make data-driven decisions about securing your data center. 
So the next fundamental approach was we have to be simple to deploy. So we are a completely software-based solution. And this actually means, again, that we are part of the ecosystem, as Dave mentioned before. And being part of that ecosystem means we can actually integrate with any one of your existing solutions to be able to distribute our software. So if you're using Ansible, Chef, Puppet, whatever you're using, we integrate with that, and we can actually deploy our solution using that. Now, one of our customers, today a customer, then a prospect, um, during the POC asked us, how much time would you require to install your solution? So we said, about three hours. And the customer said, well, OK, you know, other vendors, they asked for three days. We're like, OK. And then after deployment, the customer came back and said, well, I was really surprised that you asked for three hours. And then I was even more surprised when you actually delivered in less. So again, simple to deploy, fundamental. Moving forward, simple to manage. Again, single pane of glass to control your whole data center, a single view that's also intuitive. And it's a human lens. It's not a log of all your connections. What we're going to show you in the next session is a map of everything that's going on in your data center. And you're going to be able to visualize your data center in the way that you think or speak about your data center. And it's highly effective. So we go down to the most granular level. We go down, we go down to controlling process level, user identity, fully qualified domain names. And we give you all of this, again, from a single pane of glass to manage your whole data center in an intuitive and visible manner. So how do we do it? Right? What actually happens behind the scenes? That's what we're here to talk about in this session. So we start with, again, covering any environment, anywhere, single approach. Bare metal, virtual containers, cloud instances. And what we actually see is, as our customers are thinking about starting to use serverless, we are already developing for it. So we are future ready for our customers. We are the vendor with the largest number of supported operating systems out there currently. We support operating systems as old as Windows XP, AIX, HPUX. And at the same time, we also support operating systems that are like CoreOS, focused on containers, new tech, et cetera. So the whole data center, single approach. And we also have our agentless support. So it's not only agent-based, we also have agentless. So here we can give you visibility, a discovery mode, with what we call a collector. Our collector is based at the hypervisor level or switch level and can actually visualize your whole data center for you without, uh, without actually taking any action. And we also have our virtual appliance for enforcement for the places where you don't want or can't put our agent. So moving forward, what does the architecture look like more or less? So first of all, we'll distribute our agents on, again, any operating system, your whole data center, virtual machines, bare metal, cloud, and containers to cover your whole data center. Now, we do this. We also have our collectors. You can do a mix of them. You can do agents. You can do collectors. Again, it's not, uh, you don't have to combine them, and they're not uh, intertwined. Our agents communicate directly with our management system. And if this requires any changes in a customer network, you don't have to do that. We've also created an aggregator that can be a mediator between the agents and our management system. So we are flexible also in the deployment method. Again, fast deployment, no changes from you as a customer what's in your the, network. What's the footprint of the, uh, of the agent? That's a wonderful question. Um, so we're going to talk about that a little bit later. I have a slide exactly on that. Perfect. Thank you. So um, talking about ourselves, as Dave mentioned before, we are not a standalone solution in this world, right? We are part of your ecosystem. So we also integrate with orchestration, CMDB, SIM, and others. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So back to your question about what is our footprint. Let's talk a little bit about the agents and how our firewall works. So first and foremost, again, we are completely agent-based. We are stateful, which means that we maintain our state in policy management, right? So you are uh, changing policies, applying policies, etc. We still maintain our state. And we are completely independent of the built-in OS, meaning we also don't rely on the endpoint firewall. So if IP tables, again, can only provide you with the ability to, to block at port level, IP level, we are able to go on Linux and block at process level. We can block at fully qualified domain name, etc. So again, independent from the built-in OS. So this enables us to actually go and be completely application aware, block process to process communication across the whole data center, no matter what your operating system is. 
and we do this with better performance. And my next slide is actually about how we perform better versus an endpoint firewall, and we'll talk about that in a second. But it also provides us, us being completely independent from the underlying OS, enables us to actually perform better. We do this by being consistent across the whole data center, on-premise, cloud, containers, and we have very low overhead. So to give you a couple of details, for example, in a management system that's running, we require 2% of CPU, for example, when there are other processes running. And we require very low memory as well. So we are a very small agent. And not only that, our resources are completely configurable. So you as a customer can actually go and say on this server, I'd rather change the default configuration of this agent. So again, really small agent. Is the agent uh, kernel based? It doesn't change the kernel, no. No? We integrate with existing APIs on the operating system. Okay. okay. Well, that actually doesn't sound right, first off, because most of the APIs are in the kernel, especially at the network layer, and you're probably not in user space. So... You do have a kernel module, I'm assuming. We do. That modifies the kernel. So I'd rather touch on that later and Technically maybe Technically speaking, after it's a session. modification to the kernel. Um, but you guys don't always just work with agents. You work with other pieces specifically for visibility. But when you start talking about all of this agent-based controls, those themselves have problems. They become yet another attack surface. That concerns me. I would rather not have agents. So is there an approach that doesn't use agents? So as I mentioned before, we have two modules. The one is for visibility, it's a collector, and the other one is a virtual appliance that also enables us to block without an agent. We do have an agent-based approach, and this is our main approach, but we also provide other solutions as well. You integrate with anything like a distributed firewall? The, yes, we do. Um, AWS VPCs? So we have different integrations with different firewalls, with different clouds, etc. We do have that. Um, but if you want to touch on specific examples, we can do that off camera later. If we choose to go with the agent-less approach, what functionality do we lose? So, for instance, our collectors for visibility, they only provide you layer four because they don't touch the operating system. So you won't have a process level information. Okay, so moving forward with our agents, one of the things that you're gonna see is also live in the demos that we're gonna see later. One of the things that you're gonna see is we require no reboot at any moment. We're actually gonna be doing changes to policy, et cetera, and not at the day of installation, also not at the time of policy management, will you require any, will we require any changes to uh, reboot the system. So again, it's fast deployment and you'll see policy takes effect immediately. And we are modular, which means that our agents have different modules. You can turn them off, you can turn them on. But what we provide is a module for visibility that for us is not separate completely from a good firewall. You have to have the best visibility out there to be able to visualize your data center, again, in the way that you speak of your data center and think of it, to then be able to take data-driven decisions to be able to enforce, which is the second module, and take control. And again, down to the most granular level out there, and we will actually be showing you this value, why you have to have process level security, why you have to provide fully qualified domain names, etc. And we also have a breach detection module, which Dave mentioned very briefly before. We might touch on that. It just depends on time. So agent performance. This is taking us back to an example versus existing uh, operating system firewalls. What we have here is a comparison that we did between Gardecore's agent and IP tables. Now, again, just to mention, what you see here, the line in the middle, is actually how Gardecore performs better versus uh, the existing IP tables. And it's not only that we perform better, which is actually twice as better, and this was done in a lab environment. I'll talk about real environments in a second. But this is done in a lab environment, which means that we are actually performing better than IP tables while providing you more. What does that mean? Again, IP tables are only focused on port, IPs. We can do so much more. Process level, fully qualified domain names, et cetera. So we provide you more while still performing better. Now, one of our customers. How do you handle new sessions per second? Excuse me? How many new sessions per second can you handle? So uh, I don't have the exact number, but we're talking about thousands. And this actually takes me to my live example. Um, so our customers actually took this 
and deployed this in, in well, they saw our results and went, okay, I want to measure this versus um, my, in my data center, right? So in a lab environment, it works well, but how would it actually work in a live data center? So when talking about live data center, the customer went, did their own comparison, and found out that in a live data center with thousands and thousands of connections, we actually perform better than in a lab. And one of the main reasons for this was, was when you have a topple of a connection, a source and a destination, IP tables takes into account every different source port, even if the source and the destination is the same. Well, for us, for a data-driven solution that is, that is focused on segmentation and micro-segmentation, the source port doesn't necessarily need to be taken into account. So we disregard the source port in these connections, which actually enables us to perform much better in live environments, in real live environments. So if this is a lab result, in live environments, we perform even better in compared to IP tables. Now, again, we are part of the ecosystem. So we're not completely standalone. We understand, we can be, but we do understand that you already have existing solutions and we should be integrating with them. So for software deployment, again, I did mention this before, what we do is we can integrate with any software management solution that you have out there today, which actually enables us to distribute our agents in a very fast pace using your existing solutions. And we also use orchestration, cloud APIs, et cetera. You, you had a question about integrations with cloud, et cetera. So we do have those and we can use those to actually take information for labeling, to give context to the assets, again, to be able to visualize your data center in a way that makes sense to you. Okay. I have a question about your yeah. deployment uh, for containers. Yes. You're deploying on the container host and not within the containers themselves? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to be. So, um, so again, we integrate with orchestrations. Any orchestration out there, we can actually use to add more context to the assets as well as labeling. We also integrate with policy management solutions and, of course, um, incident management solutions. Any SIM, uh, playbook solutions, et cetera, which I know one of them actually um, had a session with you uh, earlier this week.